Dr. Atlas. Thank you, Richard Corcoran, for uh, convening this. There's been a lot of great stuff done. You know, Richard was in our administration when I first became governor as commissioner of education. And I think you could take this to the bank that in the last five and a half years, uh, there's been no state that has done more to uh, reform and improve education in this country than Florida. So Richard was really a big part of that. And I really appreciated having him in the administration. Uh, we took on school choice. We made sure schools were open during COVID, battling school unions, all this stuff. So it was really, really good. Now, the negative of having Richard in the administration is we do a charity golf tournament every year, the Governor's Cup. We raise a lot of money for charity. We have executive branch people versus the legislative branch people. And although the executive branch always wins handily, Richard doesn't get points for the governor's team. And so I told him, man, you got to start producing. So uh, maybe that was one of the reasons why I decided the, that we needed uh, him to be here uh, at New College. You know, when I became governor, uh, I remember the Speaker of the House at the time came to me and said, hey, we need to talk about New College. I didn't know what it was. Uh, I was like, we need a new college? We have enough colleges in Florida. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, no, no, new college in Sarasota. He's like, he's like I want to shut it down. It's communist, all this stuff. I'm like, what? let me see. So I look, and I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at the statute saying it's supposed to be the top honors college in, in, in the state. How come running for governor, being governor, this never came up? No one was coming to me talking about this or anything. And so, and yes, it was so much about ideology, you know, no accountability, no grades, none of this other stuff. And so, you know, he wanted to just close it. Uh, and the legislature, I don't think, really wanted to do that. But I'm just like, look, this is a public institution. And we have uh, uh, not only a, a right, we have an obligation to make sure that our public institutions are serving the best interests of the state of Florida. And how it was being operated and the culture that developed. Uh, look, if you want to go be, um, you know, on some like Marxist commune, if that's what you want to do with your life, look, who am I to say? But I don't want the taxpayers of Florida funding that. Uh, that's just not the way it goes. So, so we, we, we made some big changes. And part of it was what's in the best interest of the state of Florida and I think what you've seen, I don't think you've seen more dramatic improvement over any institution over, what are we talking about now? We're talking about a year and a half uh, since we really started to do. Uh, I look at the facilities, I look at all the improvements, a lot of interest in what's going on. So, uh, so, so this is the right thing to do. But the mission is uh, we want a liberal arts education that is rooted in the Western tradition. Uh, that is a classical education similar to what our founding fathers had w when they went to, to universities. That is something that I think will attract people, not just throughout Florida, but throughout the country. I think there's a lot of parents, especially what you see going on in some of these other university campuses. Now, the, the insanity in universities is not new, but I think what you've seen since October 7th has brought that to bear in ways that people really can't shake it because they see how insane this has become. Where you have people in the aftermath of babies being uh, executed in ovens, uh, people being raped and elderly people being beheaded, this really uh, uh, lowest of the low barbarity, and yet these students think that the thing to do is to go out there and to do Hamas. Now that, to me, that was bad enough but then to think you can commandeer the university, the property, offices, Columbia even held like some janitor hostage, uh, letting the inmates run the asylum doesn't work. So you've seen a sickness in these universities. And I think it's something now that, I mean, I've, look, I've, been I've talked to people who are very, very high up in finance and all these other things. When I was running for governor, they would have never said you're better off at Florida than Columbia or Harvard. They would never have said that. Now they're saying that. People are telling me that. Better to go to Florida. So we, we basically said when this was coming out, 
look, um, you know, you're going to abide by the appropriate code of conduct. Um, and if you don't, uh, you are going to be uh, brought and held accountable. And I think if you try to take over, so I mean, they tried to take over the, uh, the lawn at Florida State. They turned the sprinklers on. They were gone very quickly. <laughs> tried to do it at UF, didn't work. And even beyond university, you know, they tried to take over a street in Miami a couple months ago. Miami PD had all of them dragged off in 15 minutes, which was very good because they were taking over places for hours and hours in other parts of the country. Then fast forward a couple weeks after that, uh, they tried to take over a road going into Disney World uh, and the Florida Highway Patrol ejected them in 11 minutes. That's a new world record for getting them off. So, so you see this, and we've obviously done it much different, but what you're seeing in academia is what happens when leftist ideology infects an institution. It corrupts the institution. And I think back to de Tocqueville talking about how in America you had all these mediating institutions. Uh, it used to be like as a conservative, you're just like, just get government out of the way. Uh, we have all these other institutions in society, which we would r we'd rather that be where the action is. You know, the problem is, is the left infects corporate America, it corrupts it. When it infects academia, it corrupts it. When it infects medical, which Dr. Atlas can tell you about, it corrupts it. When it affects corporate media, it corrupts it. You know, corporate media has always been left-leaning, but I'd say, you know, when Reagan was president, they had to report the facts. They would try to shade it, for sure, and they would do, but they, would, they, they had to do that. Now, you have the BLM riots, remember, a few years ago, and you have a reporter from CNN standing in front of buildings burning saying that it's a mostly peaceful protest. So the facts are totally out the window. It's ideology. You also saw during COVID, ideology. You know, Scott and I would talk about the data. We had other people like Dr. Bhattacharya, Kaldorf, and like, look, in, in, on March 1st, did everybody have the answers? But like, after like a few months, it was like the data was pretty good. And yet nobody, uh, very few, would acknowledge it. And I'm just thinking to myself, how am I as a governor looking at this, seeing this clearly, and these people aren't? It's not because these people were not smart enough to understand that, because it was easy to understand. It was because the ideology had trumped evidence-based uh, science with respect to COVID. There was an agenda, and they were playing on a team. And you saw the corruption in that. You've seen the corruption. Dr. Atlas mentioned uh, the mutilation of minors. That is not consistent with the Hippocratic Oath to do no harm, to cut off somebody's private part who's 14 years old, and yet that has been something, and not very many Western countries have indulged in this. Only here you see this really going. Uh, that's a corruption of the medical establishment. Yeah, I was over in Britain last year, and um, I was talking to one of the members of parliament, and she said to me, she's like, you know, we're fighting all this woke you guys are the ones that are importing it over to the UK. Like, it's not starting here. It's, a, it's an American thing. So you see institution after institution. Criminal justice system, New York City, and how they do. Like, you, know, you, you pursue some of these charges against well-known politicians while at the same time letting criminals go free for all these things, which they have done over many, many years. Uh, you know, it's just rotten. And so, but a lot of that is the root uh, of having ideological capture of these institutions. So I think it's been something in Florida we fought across the board. Uh, we fought ESG. Uh, we fought and defeated Disney when it came to uh, the, the education of youth and making sure that, that parents had rights. Uh, we have fought this in the criminal justice system. We had two uh, ideological prosecutors who weren't following the law, one in Tampa, one in Orlando, I removed them from their posts. And people are safer as a result of that. Of course, we buck the consensus on COVID. And, you know, Florida, uh, when COVID started, we were doing well as a state. Uh, most people would have preferred to live in Florida than the governance of California, New York, Illinois, then for sure. But the contrast in how we handled COVID versus them, it has sparked a massive infusion 
uh, of people, investment, businesses uh, like this state or really any state ha has ever seen. And that would not have happened uh, had we just kowtowed to whatever the prevailing orthodoxy was. So, so we do and we, we did. But I think the root of all that, and then you see some of this other stuff that happens in corporate America. You know, when I was, uh, uh, I, was I grew up in t the Tampa Bay area, I was a public school kid, and I go to, go to Yale. And I had never been to New England in my life, and it was a culture shock. Like what some of these people were saying, some of the professors, all this stuff. But I always told myself, I'm like, you know, it, it doesn't bother me because when you get out into the real world, none of this stuff will fly. I was like, you're not going to be able to just do that. There's going to be a reality that bites. And that's what kind of I thought. Fast forward now 20-some years later, honestly, I think the joke was on me because <laughs> these folks did get jobs in corporate America. They've moved up the ladder, and then they've done a lot of really stupid things. I mean, corporate America funded the BLM riots of 2020. They poured all kinds of money in these organizations, and I can tell you that money was being pocketed and, and fleeced, uh, who would have said that was a good idea to do some of these things? Some of the stuff that they've done to indulge in ESG and all these other things, you know, has really, really been nuts. Think about when the Georgia did their election bill in 2021. Major League Baseball moved the All-Star game out of Atlanta. Uh, why? Just because there was an eruption and a moral panic uh, on social media and with corporate press, so then they kowtowed and did that. Oh, by the way, they're now bringing it back to Atlanta this year. They haven't apologized, but somehow that voting law was too bad to have it in 21, but that exact same voting law is fine to have it in 2025. Go figure. So you see all this, and, and how is this happening where all this stuff's open borders? To me, is a very ideological posture that people are taking. How does all this happen? I think the root of it really goes back to the corruption of universities and academia. Uh, I think that has been the foundation that has put a lot of the toxicity and the ideology out into various arteries in our society. Uh, and it has created a situation where if you're willing to fight back against that, like we are in Florida, you can thrive. But if you're not, uh, you are not going to do well as a, as, a, as a state or as a country. So getting it right in the universities is really, really important. And nobody's done more, uh, no state has done more than we have here in the state of Florida to ensure that our universities are not about ideological indoctrination, but they're about the classic mission of a university, the pursuit of truth, making sure that students are, are taught how to think, how to engage, how to have their assumptions questioned. You know, one of the things that I don't like about some of the formerly elite universities is they produce a lot of students that have never had their assumptions challenged. There's a lot of groupthink about that. That's not a rigorous education. Uh, you should have to defend positions. You should have to argue other points of view and back and forth. So we really believe in the classic mission of higher education. We've taken great strides in, in ensuring that this is coming uh, into a reality. And some of it is just making sure that we're not uh, allowing campuses to descend into the anarchy that you've seen in some of these areas. And you know, some, uh, someone said to me the other day, like, yeah, you know, you know, you're so lucky in Florida you know, that your universities haven't allowed uh, them to become like Columbia or Harvard or something. I'm like, it didn't luck. Uh, I was like, it didn't luck. Because I can tell you this, if uh, one of our universities allowed themselves to turn into a Columbia uh, or a Harvard, uh, the president of that university would be out of work the next day. Like, that's just what would happen. We're not messing around with this stuff. So this is really, really important. And part of what I know Richard has stressed here at New College, what we're also stressing at places like the Hamilton Center for, for Civic Life, at the University of Florida, which is really going to be an exciting thing. And I'll bet you there'll be a lot of collaboration between New College and, and Hamilton Center. I was just down in Miami at the Adam Smith. We have at Florida International, we have the Adam Smith Center for Economic Freedom, and they did their awards. They've had, they had the president of Paraguay, 
They've had uh, former, pre former heads of state all throughout the Western Hemisphere have been fellows there, and it's really going to be, I think, the focus of freedom for the Americas, which is needed because we have more leftist governments in this hemisphere today than we did at the height of the Cold War. So, so that is an engine. We have an institute at Florida State that's doing similar. So there's a lot of stuff that's going on that I think is going to make a big, big difference. But underlying all of that is an understanding of, yes, this is funded by the taxpayers. Uh, we have a responsibility to make sure we're equipping students uh, with the tools that they need to be able to do well for themselves, hopefully in Florida, but if they choose to go elsewhere, go elsewhere, uh, and that's what we have to do. But we also have to prepare them uh, to be good citizens of this republic. And that's not always the same thing as teaching somebody skills that they can take into a career. Uh, in fact, that is something that has been neglected in university after university for decades after uh, decades upon decades. And when all these august universities were founded, Harvard in the 1600s, Yale in 1701, that was the primary purpose that they were doing. They were trying to produce leaders uh, who could be leaders in their communities and eventually be leaders in what would become the United States of America decades later. So that's what we're doing here, uh, what Richard's really been leading with New College. That's what we're doing across the, the state of Florida. And think about it. You're, you're a parent, you worked 18 years to be able to instill certain values into your kid. Do you want your kid going somewhere for four years and having all of that undone, and then they charge you $150,000, $200,000 for the privilege? No, you don't want that. So you have an ability, particularly Florida residents, where you could go to a place like New College, University of Florida, these schools, in-state tuition's like $6,300. Uh, you don't really pay tuition if you're a high-performing student because you qualify for bright futures and likely pay zero tuition or 75% off the tuition depending on what level you qualify for. That is really, really significant that you're able to do that because I think having all this debt has been a huge problem for so many students. And like I'm not somebody that says taxpayers should, should bail people out of the debt. I certainly don't think you should act unconstitutionally and do it when the Supreme Court said you couldn't do it. Uh, but I also think that you know a lot of students have been told by these universities that these degrees were magical, and you know you go $100,000 in debt and you have a degree in zombie studies, the, the C's aren't parting for you. It's just not. It's not the way it works. So so we're doing it in a way that's really accessible for folks, and with tuition being where it is, and we have not raised tuition. Uh, since I've been governor, and many years before that. So I think it's been 10 years the state of Florida has kept tuition in place. Um, now, for part of that 10 years, we didn't have significant inflation in the overall economy. Of course, we have had a lot of inflation over the last three or four years. And um, so some people say, well, the inflation's going up. You know, the universities need more. I'll say, wait a minute. You know, we had, we've had academic inflation with the cost of tuition for years in this country. We're basically holding the line and say, do, do what you got to do. You know, and we provide good funding from the state, but we are not going to be in a situation where we want to raise tuition. We think it's important that it's something uh, that it's low. But people are going to look to the schools like this for the leaders in the future. People are going to graduate from New College or the Hamilton Center or some of these places. They're going to have a strong foundation. They're going to understand what it means to be an American. They're going to understand the foundations of this country. Uh, they're going to be able to apply that, uh, not just as citizens, but as leaders, whatever vocations they may. And some of them may even end up uh, being, being involved in some type of elected office or being involved in the administration of government itself you're going to be well equipped uh, to be able to do that. So I think this is a really important conference. I know you guys have had a lot of great speakers. It's saying something that you can get so many people to come uh, here. There's a vibrancy of what's going on here in, here in Sarasota. Look, I, I've, when I found out we had a chance to, to make this something special, I jumped at the opportunity because I'm thinking to myself, okay, you know, if you're a family in like Arizona, 
and you really want to have classical education, would you rather visit Michigan in January or Sarasota in January? <laughs> So the uh, f final thing um, I'll say uh, before you guys uh, wrap up is just uh, when Benjamin Franklin walked out of the Constitutional Convention, he was asked, um, Dr. Franklin, did you give us a republic or a monarchy? And his answer was, a republic if you can keep it. They knew you can have the best constitution in the world, you can have the best declaration of independence in the world. These things do not run on autopilot. They require every generation of Americans to step up and fight for freedom and defend freedom when it's threatened. And sometimes that may mean put on a uniform, risk your life, and even give the last full measure of devotion for service of this country. Uh, but a lot of what it means to keep a republic, and I would say reclaim the republic, uh, given where we are now, is having good citizens who understand America's unique role uh, in human history, who understand the values that our founders articulated that are enduring uh, to this day, and who are able uh, to lead in their communities in ways uh, that will put those values at the forefront. So uh, you have my appreciation for all the hard work that you're doing uh, in all terms of everything that we've done here in New College and in higher education uh, writ large. Uh, we've had a lot of great feedback, you know, some of it, the feedback, like when certain quarters are negative, you know you're doing a good job because you're over the target. So some people who, who, who lodge criticism, they're just mad that, that this is no longer their personal ideological chew toy, that we're actually insisting on things that are being good. But so you see that and you see a lot of positive feedback but as proud as we are of the, te the steps that we've taken, and we've taken stronger steps than anyone else in the country, you ain't seen nothing yet. Thank you. Appreciate it.